Hello everyone, we are starting the session for today. Hope you are able to hear me. Welcome to the webinar on Upscale Your Workforce with Azure Virtual Desktop. My name is Amita Sharma, your host for the day. Allow me to guide you a bit about the tool to ensure that you have an interactive experience during the session. Through the discussion, you can post your questions in the live Q&A panel and it will be taken up by our expert during the Q&A pit stop. Today, um, we'll be covering how you can use Azure Virtual Desktop to further improve the productivity of your staff and choose between shared and dedicated environment. We will also cover about the legacy applications. Now, let me introduce you to our speaker for the session today. We have with us Kenny Koe, who is the CEO of Global Connect Resources. His role is in bringing technical gaps on his client side. Uh, he also has a 20 years of experience in software development, process management, service delivery, IT operations, client relationship, strategy planning, people management, and solution consultancy on customized solution. Now, I would like to request our respected speaker to start off the session for today. Kenny, over to you. Kenny, uh, you're on mute. Yeah. Okay. So okay. thank you. Uh, thank you, Amrita. So uh, I would say um, thank you for everyone who joined us today. So thank you for taking your time uh, to join me. So uh, Amrita, is my screen already shared right now? Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay. So let me see. Okay. Let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, we can see your screen, Kenny. Okay. So uh, again, good morning to everyone. So I hope everybody is, um, I mean, stay at home. Uh, and right now it's MCO time. So my name is um, Kenny. So let me see. Okay. So basically, I'm from Global Connect Resources Sustainable Hub, as per intro, a good intro by Amrita. So basically, Global Connect Resources Sustainable Hub headquarters is actually located in Penang. And we actually focus primarily on de developing softwares and we have been actively uh, moving our clients and helping our clients from to moving to the cloud technology over more than a year, I mean, more than 10 years. So, um, and myself actually uh, have been starting to explore uh, Microsoft Azure since its inception. And we just started uh, like focusing on it around like two years ago. And one of the things that excite me the most is actually called the virtual desktop. So why we are so excited about this uh, AVD, okay? Or we call it Azure Virtual Desktop. Last time it was called Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Virtual Desktop. So in general, we love it because um, it actually helps a lot of our clients in the sense that it saves a lot of productivity hours and the cost saving is amazing. So, I mean, I'm not gonna spoil the, I mean, spoil the surprise. I mean, we will share more in the benefits column so to, I mean, we will actually have prepared some slides to actually help you to maybe make decision uh, to see what are the benefits. And then hopefully you can actually uh, take away today uh, on some of the things that you can actually use for your work or maybe to apply over on your companies. Okay, so with further, well, further uh, before I continue, so basically I need your help to fill in some poll, which uh, I believe my teammates will actually help out to start up the poll to understand more about yourself then uh, you will actually also prepare myself to like maybe ask, I mean, prepare some specific slides or maybe to speed up certain areas if you already know. So uh, Amrita, if you don't mind, can you help me to start the poll? Sure, sure. So uh, before beginning into the session or moving into the session, we would like to do a quick polling as uh, Kenny has suggested. So here goes the poll polling. So I'm going to launch a poll that you'll be able to see on your screen. We request each one of you to kindly um, you know, put in your put in your responses and let us know your viewpoint on the same. So here, here the first poll goes. The question is: Have you used RDP before? Have you used remote desktop before? I request each one of you to kindly cast your uh, opinion here. Okay, I see fifty nearly. Okay, I see the percentages is moving. Nearly 60% of the people have voted. 
and 90% have chosen yes. Okay. I'll keep the polling open for another 30 seconds. I request each one of you to kindly vote. Okay, I see people are voting and putting in their responses. We'll close the we'll close this particular poll in another 10 seconds. Request each one of you to vote, please. Okay, thank you for your voting. I'm ending the first poll now. And I'm going to share the results with you as well. Okay, we can see, Kenny, that 83% of people have gone for yes. So they have used RDP before. Mm, that's pretty, pretty good. I mean, it means that uh, most of you are either in IT background or a super user. That's pretty good. Um, let's try on the second poll question then. Okay. So I'm going to launch an another poll wherein we would like to know whether, you know, if your company is exploring on moving your server to cloud. Okay, I see people are voting. The poll will be open for another 40 to 50 seconds. I see 69 percentage have currently gone for yes. I'll keep the polling open for another 20 seconds. Request each one of you to kindly vote. Okay, so with this, I'm going to end the poll, the second one for today. And I'm going mm. to share the results as well. Wow, this is pretty good. I mean, it seems like 67% of you are actually thinking of moving to the cloud. That is very, very good. I yes. mean, uh, wow, I mean, that's awesome. So let's last, uh, go for the last polling then. Sure. Okay, so here goes the third poll, wherein we would like to know whether you're, you've heard of Azure Virtual Desktop, you're aware of it. Thank you for sharing your responses. I'll keep it open for another 60 seconds. Yeah, this is a very good uh, audience. They are very responsive. Yep. <laughs> Request for your voting. Okay, 59 percentage have currently selected no. So we'll wait for another few more seconds. Okay, I'm ending the polling right now. now. I'm going to share the results. Okay, so for those that already know, I believe you guys have some burning questions. So those questions, please do hold. I mean, you can just write in the uh, Q&A. So later after this presentation, I will actually uh, answer them as best as I can. And of course, I have found my, found my peers who actually can help me to answer. Then for those who never heard of AVD uh, or Azure Virtual Desktop, welcome. This, you are in the right session. So we will start off with the presentation then. Thanks, okay. uh, Amrita. Amrita. Sure, Kenny, we can start off. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Let me just close this poll. Okay. So uh, welcome. So for those who, uh, as I said, it used to call uh, Microsoft Virtual Desktop 
right now you have just renamed, I think like a few days ago to become Azure Virtual Desktop. So in my slide, you might get uh, Microsoft Virtual Desktop, Azure Virtual Desktop, but they are identical. Okay, so just um, quick tidbits. What is actually uh, Windows uh, Virtual Desktop or Azure Virtual Desktop? So actually, uh, Azure Virtual Desktop is a comprehensive tools that built around Azure to allow you to do remote desktop. So to be exact that your end user can use Windows on any devices that they have. Example, like their mobile, it could be a browser, it could be, um, well, and I mean, it could be, I think most of the devices that you have. So some of the key features that they use is actually, of course, using Windows 10 experience, inclusive, actually they have developed a specific, uh, optimized version of Office 365 Pro Plus, which work very, very well in virtual desktop. Then of course, it also does support uh, 2012 R2, 2016, 2019. And the thing that I like it the most is the global service where you can just scale up and scale down. Means that if you suddenly have a influx of maybe um, trainees or maybe research parties, so you actually can just scale up the service or maybe suddenly you do not need it, you just, just terminate almost immediately. Then of course, we have something called a personal pool, publish app, and of course, we still have our Windows 7. I believe for those that are already in the IT background, Windows 7 have been, um, what did I say that? It's already been ZBB, already been EOL. That's been already end of life. Then of course, uh, one of the wonderful things about, uh, I mean, in general, virtual desktop works like remote desktop, but it comes with all the security and all the peace of mind that you need. Okay, so now let's move on to the next slides. Okay, so in general, for native uh, Azure Windows des uh, virtual desktop, actually everything is handled by Azure. Okay, so basically all you need to do is just log in and use. And of course, just uh, control the permission and uh, I mean, of course the security, I mean, you can just put in some controls as a what app they can use, what app they cannot use. So those kind of things. Then of course there are compliance and uh, compliance and uh, latency. So in general, whoever have internet, you can use this. And the VM can be in any Azure region, which I will show in the short one. Then of course all the data by default. Okay, this is the old slide, but right now all the data actually is located in the place that you choose. Example, you choose in Singapore, so it's located in Singapore. If you choose in, uh, let's say in US, then it will be in US. Then let, connection latency, I will share a little bit more when over on the, some of the common areas that you need to aware of. So if I'm too fast, who, please do let me know, I mean, in the chat. So I will slow down a little bit. Okay, so for the security and compliance, um, the whole Microsoft, uh, sorry, the whole Azure uh, virtual desktop, actually is the whole authentication is actually based on Azure Active Directory. So what does this mean is that actually you can use your AD and link with the Azure AD so that the user can just seamlessly just log in. We are entering username password, like single sign on. So then of course over here, because they use the port like 443, to be exact that even you didn't open your ports, actually the user can connect through SSL. So that is, and everything is encrypted. So you, as I say, um, everything, uh, and basically there's a reverse connection reverse connect technology, which actually eliminates, that means you need to open more ports. You need to do a lot of uh, like for the firewall. So actually all that have been reduced because Microsoft done that for you. Okay. So for those who have never seen Azure, so these are some of the Azure location we have. So we have though uh, in China, we have in Asia, we have, uh, I mean, in Asia, most of us will be using in Singapore. Of course, in East Asia is somewhere in Hong Kong. In I mean, these are the two common area uh, locations that are used with a good latency. Well, of course, if you have global reach, then of course you can deploy some of your Azure in US, Europe, then of course in Africa and South Africa region. Okay, so this is some of the introduction that I can share a little bit on the Microsoft, uh, I mean, sorry, Azure Virtual Desktop. Sorry about that. So to be sum up, it's just a remote desktop with all the security. So if for those that are who use, uh, how do I call that? 
remote session or what they call that a terminal service in your own servers. So it works exactly the same, reduce the complexity. So now let's look at some of the statistics that we gather from the web. Okay, so over here right now, there are, I mean, right now in the whole world, I mean, as per 2020, there are 76% people who use Windows for their business. I mean, I believe in Malaysia, it could be go higher. I mean, especially for myself, I also use a lot of Windows application for my day-to-day -day work. Then of course there are more, but there, you can't deny there are around 91% Smartphone penetration. What does it mean is that every 10 people in Malaysia, nine people will have a handphone. Okay, but you cannot say the same that 10 people will have laptops. Not everyone. I mean, maybe it's share, but for mobile, it's very personal. So everyone have their own. So that's based on the statistic. Okay, but the problem that we face uh, when we deploy the solution to our client is that the application that you use on your mobile doesn't reflect the same capability that you have on your Windows application. For instance, this is a Photoshop in iPad. Despite it works great in iPad, but we still, there are many features that are still missing from iPad app, which may be a deal breaker. So most of people will just wait. But for us who need uh, to work with our uh, Photoshop's or AutoCADs, maybe uh, some of, let's not talk about maybe that advanced thing. Maybe let's just talk about Microsoft Word. If you use the web version, you will see there are some limitations that you cannot get from the app versions. So this is where we use the WVD, sorry, the AVD to actually solve it. So now I will more focus over on the benefits that you will gain by using AVDs. Okay, so there are three main things that I will share today uh, before I talk about some of the uh, common problems that you will face. So the first one that I will talk is more about the portabilities. So in other words, your staff will be able to work anywhere at any time. So you are no longer constrained in office and you don't have to worry about the licensing. Okay. The next thing is uh, on demand. So most of the, my client, I mean, I'm not sure for you guys. I mean, some of my clients still using hard disk, 5400 hard disk. So for them to upgrade to SSD, I mean, it costs around like a few hundred ringgits. But again, if you haven't changed to SSD, please do change. But I mean, I'm just talking about small problem. I mean, some of them is because of the SSD. Some will be major problem would be like graphic card, graphic intensive, like AutoCAD. So example, every time there's a new graphic card, you need to buy a new one. And every time you want to buy a new one, it costs you around like four to 5,000 to 10,000. Depends on how many video cards you have, and of course, a number of employees that require that processing power. So we'll talk a little bit more on the on demand. Then the next thing is the security. You can have the best tool in the world, but if somebody just hack you or just take your data away, or some uh, internal people who actually take your data away, uh, well, it's, I mean, it makes all this effort worthless. I mean, nobody, I mean, especially for IT background, no matter how good you do, as long as somebody hack, they forget everything, they forget the rest. So, I mean, I'm not sure how many uh, people are IT. I think I should put that in the poll, how many people are from IT background. So for those uh, who are end user, please be mercy with us. But if for those IT uh, from IT background, I will say these schools will save you a lot of time in terms of protecting your infrastructure. For end user, just use as much as you want because you are protected by default unless you try to install a virus into it and yet you still protect it, which I will share a little bit more. Okay, so let's start with the first point that I want to cover is the portability. Okay, so for those who don't know what's RDP, okay, so this is a remote desktop. So I'm just trying to do a simple demo over here. So I'm gonna use a screenshot, then later I will show you the real thing. But I'm not going to do a lot of uh, how to use remote desktop, how to set up the remote desktop. Nah, I'm not going to cover that. We will cover that uh, on the last session. Okay, so over here, you actually enter uh, what is your so I mean the PC that you want to join. I'm talking about internet, not inside your office. So you can work from home. You just enter my PC. Then after that, you start connecting. I hide the name because I don't want anybody to go into my real PC. Then after that, if you can see there's a small Q arrow over on the top, 
So this is how I know this is where I'm connected to a remote desktop. And of course, I zoom it so that you can see, but of course I have to hide the name. Then again, let's assume that I need to open a very complicated program, which I want to use on my mobile app or I want to use on my another computers. Oh, anyway, so I just open a notepad and I do something very, very hard. So I just call Hello World. So far, so good. Okay. So I know you guys cannot talk, but uh, I assume everybody don't have any questions. So this is just a remote desktop. As I said, it's very simple. You just uh, enter the PC name, enter, the, I mean, if you're using uh, Azure Authentic, I mean, Active Directory, immediately you will log you in. Then you can just, over here, I just enter my Hello World. So to prove to you a little bit on a short demo on RDP, because I think we have a small percentage of people who never see remote desktop before. So over here, this is my remote desktop. I will just press connect. Okay, then of course, credential pop. Okay, so the PC will be connected. Okay, so this PC is currently located somewhere in Singapore. And this one is something when I created this, uh, when I'm doing this PowerPoint, obviously. So my hello world is still there. So with this, I believe for those who never use RDP, you will start to give your mind some thinking. That's mean uh, one of the main advantage that I want to share over here. Your work will stay there forever. So every time you just log in, it will be there. So that is one of the things that I love about RDP. And the best thing is that uh, if you know, if you don't know how to use Windows, uh, that will be weird. But if you know, basically everything will work the same. So over here, we tested with like Photoshop. We have some, I mean, we have clients who actually try with Autodesk. We works very well. Then we use Chrome. We even develop software over here. And our software developer love it. Love it until that we have not enough resources. So we need to increase our demands. Okay, so now let's go. Okay, so now let me just see how I'm going to close this. Okay. Wait, uh, because this. Okay. So that is just a short demo on the RDP. Okay. So now let's go to some scenario about the benefits. What if you need to continue your work on NL computers? So when your staff, example, like for a call center, you need to pass your work from one person to another person. So basically what you actually have to do is example, like right now, let's assume I got another laptop. Okay. So I enter like what I did just now. I just click the user, I mean the server name, connect, you check my credential, then pop. Okay. My hello world is here. But what if I got another laptop and somebody tried to log in? It's the same. You just enter your, I mean, the credential, pop is going, but you will realize the laptop on the left actually get disconnected. That if you use the current RDP, but for AVD, you have the option to run concurrently and you can have sharings. So it's very important that you keep note of this word called sharing because that's how you're gonna save a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Okay, but again, we will talk more when we talk about the money part. Okay, so now let's talk about what are the OS supported over here. So we have uh, on the pipeline, we have already Windows 10 Enterprise. We have the single session and multi-session. Okay, take note. I tried myself before, multi-session doesn't work if you download to your own desktop and try to replicate, it doesn't work. I tested, so for those who want to ask the question, nah, it doesn't work. So it only works in Azure. And you cannot even buy this multi-session. And you don't have to hack, it's already there by itself. I, we love it and uh, a lot of people can work together and that's where the major cost saving. So you of course got the normal version, which is a single session. Then we have the Windows 7 single session also, uh, Windows Server 2019, 16, 12. Um, we don't use that much for end user, mostly it's for development session or well, et cetera. But most of the time we will use is Windows 10 enterprise multi-session. Okay, then for the Azure VM size, well, basically whatever you, I mean, it's listed in the Azure website, you can use all of them. You can use one call, two call, 10 call, I'm sorry, not 10 call. I did eight calls, I mean, keep on increment by, by that way. Okay, so then just now I did mention that it works on mobile. That Of course, I cannot show you on my handphone, so I do a screenshot. So of course, if you have an iPad, you can just enter the server name pop your work your hello world is on your ipad right now so in 
virtual desktop, there are three ways you actually can get uh, make the whole connection works. Number one, of course, you can use the Audi clients and we actually can use uh, Windows 10 integration. Um, well, I love that. And some of my clients, especially in the accounting firm, they want to use HTML5 because they prefer it that way. So, but again, I mean, regardless, you like Audi, Audi client or you like to integrate directly to Windows 10 or you want to use HTML5 browser, up to you. The choices is yours. But if you ask me which one I love the most, definitely is Audi client because I can do everything. You can print, you can transfer file, it's so good. But of course, the transfer file, we can disable it. So as long as the admin don't disable it, I can transfer file, copy paste into the virtual desktop seamlessly. And I try for around 20 git files, it works seamlessly for my internet speed of 100 meg. So anybody less than that, I haven't really tried. But small file, I think should be working fine. Okay, then I'll move on to the next one. Okay, if you are a Samsung uh, supporters, so of course, if you're using Samsung Galaxy, you can just plus your, uh, plug in your U, uh, USB, then you actually can work like a normal computer. So you can connect to the, out, uh, the remote desktop, and then you can start to use like a normal Windows. Okay. So in general, there are three things that I want to um, give the heads up on what are the benefits that my client enjoy. Number one is that, like just some, imagine every time I want to open a Photoshop, it takes you around like, if you're using SSD or using like my, I mean, SSD, it will take you around like three seconds or four seconds. You want to open maybe a two gig file, so maybe it takes you around like, I don't know, maybe around 10 seconds. But if you use remote desktop, we just resume instantly. Means like when I do my catalog, I can just resume, log in, pop. Okay, the catalog is where I stop. I don't have to, ah, yeah, where's the file? Where did I save? So that's something that we enjoy. Number two is instant debugging. I mean, this more to developers. So example, uh, I'm not sure how many people have developed Androids. So every time you want to open the Android Studio, it takes some time. You want to compile, it takes another time. So every time uh, I want to do something, I mean, it will take me around like maybe 10 minutes to run. So usually I go for toilet break, then I come back. But with remote desktop, today 5.30, I finish my work. Tomorrow, I can just continue. So I can continue my debugging. And of course, the, my favorite is actually able to transition our work seamlessly to our peers. Remember, we got two computers. You can pass from A person to B person. So the B person can continue, especially for call centers. You are troubleshooting. Okay, now I want to go back. So rather than the person have to reopen the whole tools, everything again, we just pass the whole session for them. This is work great whenever we are debugging uh, issues or try to troubleshoot or for call centers when our tickets, we don't want to recheck everything again. So, I mean, I'm not sure you call credit cards every time you call in, sir, can you tell me your name again? Yeah, so imagine this is like, when I just enter, immediately I can get everything resumed from the last conversation. So these are some of the key benefits that my client have shared with me. Okay, I can see there are some qu four questions comes in already. Uh, well, I'll look at it later. Okay, so far, uh, Amira, anybody complain I'm going too fast or so far it's okay? I think we're good, Kenny. Okay, thank you, Amira. Okay, so, um, okay, so, well, now let's continue to my next favorite part, which is the on demand. So whenever we say on demand, we want things to be, when I need it, I got it. Okay. But let's talk about some facts first. I mean, the reason why we want to refresh our laptop. I mean, every, there are people who change laptop every 18 years. So 18 years, like, yeah, I mean, I mean, in Malaysia, we have people who have 18 years, really. But uh, generally, we have people like 18 months, okay, and three years. And these are some of the common reasons why people change laptops. Number one is the security. Number two is the productivity, the functionality, and of course, the total cost ownership. It's sometimes it's much cheaper to change a laptop than repair it. Okay. So then these are some of the jargons that you will know, and we will share more to you if you're actually interested to more later. Uh, more later. So there are three ways you actually can configure your AVDs. Number one, you want the premium experience. Everyone got their own virtual PC. Oof. Of course, that's what we call the personal. 
Then, of course, uh, then the other one is you want um, safe cost, but I still want premium. So you can use pool by single session. Then uh, most of my clients will choose is definitely is the pool multi-session. That means you use one big server and everybody share. So when the server is already reached the maximum capacity, it will spin up a second server. So these are the three common, uh, there are, these are the only three options that you can use in AVDs. So let's look at uh, the comparison of the first one. So if you go for the personal one, whew, look at the number of dollars that I put over there. There are five rating. It's very, very expensive, but it's worth it if you are doing uh, something that requires high resources. Okay. So let me just say high resources could be maybe like programming. But so far from my personal experience, even you use for AutoCAD, you can still use multi-session. So single session so far, I only use it because I, I mean, it's only used for myself for doing testing and I don't want anybody to look at what I'm doing. Okay, number two, actually we have pool single session. So everybody get their VM, but randomly allocated. So assuming you got like five PC, but you got 20 users. So assuming that you only have maybe um, five people logging at the same time. So basically they will just randomly assign to that, the PC to the user. Okay, so I believe some of you might have some questions uh, about, hey, what, what happened to my data? Yeah, we will cover that in the short while. And of course, this is my favorite part. We have multi-session. Everybody share one VM and the cost is ridiculous cheap. It's really, really cheap. And that is the main reason why I go for this multi-session. Okay, so in comparison, these are the three things. If you have the money to burn, you go for the first one. And of course, you want the highest security, of course, the first one. Then you think uh, the security is still good in multi-session and you want to save a lot of money, then go for the third one. Then the second one, usually I don't use. I either use the first one or the third one. But it really depends on your business scenario. So let's look at some Microsoft slides. So these are some of the uh, example that Microsoft has shared. The thing that I want to show you is over on the third point, okay? As you can see, originally, maybe you spend around like 40 US dollars for one session, for one user. Now imagine this, it's just dropped to seven US dollars. It's like paying for Netflix. It's really, really cheap. And of course it can be even cheaper if you want to uh, if your user don't really use a lot of things, as about they just use Chrome. I mean, yeah, then you can actually reduce it to further. So seven US dollar is good for people who use Excel. So if you want to use AutoCAD, definitely it's not seven. It can be more than that. Okay, because you need a dedicated video cards for it. So that is why we use Azure for the video cards. Okay, then the next thing is actually, we have um, the capability that we love the most is you need to deploy and scale in minutes. Suddenly, uh, I mean, I'm not sure how many people are in maybe E and E. I mean, even I mean not E and sorry, in emergency uh, situations where suddenly you need to scale up a lot of PC to maybe like do volunteer job. So with Azure, you can just deploy in minutes. Well, you want it now, you just have to enable it now. And the beauty is that you can pay by minutes. I mean, basically, if you use it for maybe five hours, you just pay for five hours. Okay, then of course over here, again, it comes with all the security you need, all the compliance, and you don't have all the headache. It just enable, when you finish, just pew, delete it off. Okay, again, you have 54 regions, you've got 140 countries. So just make a pick. The, okay, so there is, as I said, on demand. Then the beauty of this is that you don't, you might not need to even buy new license because you already have the license if you are using Microsoft 365 or you are using Windows 10 Enterprise E3, okay? Then of course, for those that already have RDS, the remote desktop uh, server, the client, so yeah, you can reuse it back. So as I said, you might not even have to reinvest or uh, to buy new things, okay? But of course, if you buy like uh, not E3, then maybe you want to consider to top all the cheapest actually, uh, we actually use the 365 business. But recently, uh, Microsoft have come up with some new package, very, very attractive package. Uh, but so far, I still haven't get more information. But if uh, during the POC, if you want it, then we can straight talk more about that. So it can really be ridiculous. Everything can be like a Netflix price. So yeah, we can explore how we can play on that. Okay. 
So these are some of the things that you want to consider. I mean, why others actually use this method instead of upgrading laptops? Number one, definitely is the video cards. You can buy one video card for one user, which is a very good one, but it's only belong to that user. And that user, when he go home and he don't use it, uh, well, we will say goodbye to that super uh, video cards. But he used AVD. Imagine I can share with, maybe the same video card I can share with five people concurrently if I want to. I also can do it like just how I say, satu kali satu orang. So actually one person at one time. Then the next thing is, of course, for training providers. So you need to set up your lab. You want to configure, oh, this time I want to do Python. I want to set up a Python class. I want to do for maybe a microprocessor. I need to create another image. So it's very troublesome. So with AVD, basically it's just a matter of just choosing what I want, like buffet. I want this, I want this, I want this. So you can pick and pack, okay? Then we will cover that also uh, in the next few slides. Then of course, for those who do research. So for my case is that sometimes we like to do, especially for security, uh, you want to replicate a certain virus. Are you going to run on your own laptop? I don't think so. So usually we will take this AVD to sacrifice. We put into one desktop. We want to see how the worm works. Then we actually monitor on it. Then after when we finish, we just delete. So, I mean, again, these are some of the reasons why people upgrade, use this method rather than buy a laptop just purely for these purposes. Okay, so now, wow, we got more questions. Okay, so yeah, don't worry, guys. I will answer a question in a short while. Okay, well, one more coming. Okay, <clears throat> so now let's go to my third point. We will cover about security. Again, pantang larang. You got all the powerful tools, but then your security like, I, like putting a padlock. I mean, some people actually uh, have their surgery with a padlock and wish that it's actually secure. Trust me, it's not. Okay, so with this, putting your data on the cloud. So I believe just now uh, there are, certain, I think almost half, I mean, less than half the people that still not consider go to cloud because of security. So I will share a little bit more and some of the problem that we face. Okay, so right now, everybody is talking about BYOD. So BYOD, it means that bring your own device. You have your own mobile. You have your own handphone. You have your own this and that, this and that. I'm not sure in the future what we have, but let's talk about. In general, everyone have three devices uh, for IT. Usually we have three devices. We either have a laptop, we have a mobile, or we have a tablet, or we have three of them. Okay, so as we highlighted over here, 87 business already start to depend on their employee abilities to access mobile apps from their smartphones. Okay, so we're talking about 87%. Let's talk about maybe like Grab. So when you want to drive your Grab, you actually need to use their own mobile. I mean, Grab is not going to give you the handphone. So let's take assumption of that. And in US is, um, well, everybody say BYOD is a good thing. And BYOD actually is going to expand even more by 300 over billion by 2022. And actually 59% company actually already start to adopt BYOD. But thanks to MCO, I think the rate is much more higher because all, I mean, I'm not sure about you guys, but most of my clients actually start to use their own personal laptops or their handphone to do the work, to check emails, maybe to uh, reply email, to do enter meeting. And sometimes they actually computer tablet jalan, then they use a handphone to do the video conference. So that is also called BYOD. So we need to have the capability to let people to do that. Okay. So uh, again, the more people use their, bring their own device, malware attack also on the rise. So in 2010, roughly we have around 29 million uh, attack in that particular year. But if we look at the whole thing, actually in 2018, they already have 812 million attack. And I'm not talking about in the cloud, I'm talking about on-premises. Most people who go to the cloud is because they get attacked on their on-premises. And this number, I was, I'm not, I don't have the fact with me, but if I go to ask, um, put assumption, I will say maybe seven, I mean, I mean seven out of 10, those are on-premises. Okay, and the most common one that I do for during MCO, I mean, before MCO and until MCO, these are the some common screenshot that I will get. Okay. I'm not sure how many of you have seen this. If you've seen this, congratulations. You are not alone. You got 800 people, 800 million people that 
face the same problem. So these are most common problem that you will face on premise or even on cloud. Okay, but on cloud, actually we already have a built-in mechanism to prevent this. So which I will share in a short while. Okay. So for those who never seen this, trust me, you don't want to see this, especially for those who don't do backup. I got clients who actually pay millions to get this resolved. That's mean they have to pay to unlock their data. And they have clients that actually shut down their system for three months and go back to ancient way where they use Excel to continue their works because the ERP cannot work. So I really hope that none of you actually face this, but if you face this, then I say, oh, you're not alone. And if you move to cloud, this problem will not be that bad if you read the correct settings, okay? So now let's talk about AVD. So in AVD, one of the, I mean, there's a lot of things that actually they use to protect, but I don't want to go through all of them because it's quite boring. So let's talk about just now that screenshot that I showed, the red, beautiful things. How do AVD protect you? So these are the magic word that uh, make me so excited about AVD is the FS logic. Okay, so how does FS logic have is that imagine we have around four computers over here. Okay, all of them are sharing one, one server. Okay, remember I say what well, everybody one server, one of them get attacked. Okay, but the same uh, the same three users are in the same server, don't feel anything. Why? It's because if you look at here on the FS logic, I'm not sure if you can see my mouse. You can see the FS logic has split out all your customer data into another network storage which is encrypted and isolated. Okay, so what does this mean? It comes with two things. Remember I say that you can actually, when you join in to, now I log in to a computer A, I still got my data. Now when I log out, I log in again, I go to computer B, I still have my data. Why this happened is because of FS logic. So your data is isolated from the server. The server is just holding is the windows, the applications, that's all. Okay, all your data is all stored in a separate storage. So it could be your Windows uh, Live setting, your Office 365 license, your My Documents. So whatever belongs to personal, everything is there. Okay, and don't worry, it won't get bloated. If you get bloated, all you have to do is just increase this space and just takes minutes. Okay, so with FS Logic X, there's something that they actually separated all this. I mean, that's when your app, the operating systems, yes, it can still be in the server, but then your user profile are in another location. So let's assume that your comp your program gets spoiled. All you have to do is just lock out and lock into a new computer. Hop, voila, you can just resume your work. But of course, um, all your work will have to reopen again. But the most important thing, your files are safe. But if your files get corrupted, you, I mean, inside the this storage and file sharing, we can do a multi-versioning. So we can roll back to yesterday version. So as I said, as long as you do correctly, you don't have to worry about the red color thing that I showed you earlier. Okay, and the best thing for the end user, because the thing that I'm worried when I'm doing the uh, POC when, uh, in the beginning of last year, I think, I can't remember the date, it's slow like hell. I mean, imagine that my storage is on another server and I try to access anything, it will be slow. But FS Logic, is so fast that the user don't have to wait like three hours just to log in. It actually takes me a few seconds, pop, I'm in already, and the user can copy paste file, like it's everything on the local. That is how good this FS logic have solved in a, I mean, in, uh, okay, Azure Virtual Desktop. Okay, of course, FS logic do have exist in uh, your on premises, but the performance is totally different, trust me. Okay, so in FS Logic, some of the things they actually have helped is actually we can actually profile containers. We can actually group them up together. Okay, that's why we want to put in like just office data, the OneDrive, the Skype, the Office Search TV, everything. We actually can put all the profile into the container. Okay, so this is not going to store into your AD, but this store into the Azure site. Okay, they actually put everything into one hard disk. So imagine it's just a hard disk. Then of course, we also can hide certain application. Okay, if this app user login is not a, a IT, I don't want to show them the certain application with admin rights. So we can do application masking. 
Then of course JavaScript, we can just let them choose. Okay, certain version <clears throat> which have some um, compliance issue, I can just uninstall and install. It will be very hard, big hassle for those who have around like, I'm not sure, let's take more than 10, <clears throat> 10 users. You want to install one by one the PC? Oh my God, man, that's so hard. But with this, it just take, again, minutes. <clears throat> the second thing that I love is the Azure AD. So with the Azure AD, actually you can do all this, all the one that I listed over here. You can actually enable access if the person resign. Okay, these are the some common question that I have is that, what if the employee resign and take all my data away? Well, with Azure AD, all you have to do is just disable the access to the, I mean, disable the access in the AD. He can't even access anything already. I mean, all the files are in the inside the Azure AD is all protected. So compare this that the user copy the files and put into a local computer and work. So which one is more secure? Azure AD is more secure, okay? Because I remove your login, you can't even access all the files anymore. And of course, the user want a great experience. So it's great experience. It's really easy. It's very fast. You don't even have to log in. I just start to show you. I just pop, just click login and that's it. Then example, I can uh, balance. That's mean how much the as a certain user, as well IT, like myself, I'm an IT background, I need dedicated servers, I mean dedicated PC because I need to do high processing, I need to do some a lot of uh, analysis. But maybe for normal end user, I can crumb them up into one pool to do um maybe like share resources. Okay. So these are some of the common things that we enjoy from just using Azure AD. And of course, over here, there are few things that we can do is that we actually can manage the image by role. So if you are IT, you can have certain programs. If you are planners, you got certain programs. If you are manufacturing, I only let you have one program, which is the maybe the shop floor control system. Yeah. Okay, then of course, we also can do like traditional app layering. Man. You just copy everything to one uh, virtual and pass to everyone. You can do it that way. That's the easiest actually. Then of course, you also can do app streaming. You don't let the user know what they are using remote. They just open the program, pop, it's run already. But everything that they do is actually in the Azure, I mean, in the Azure, sorry, virtual desktop, okay? So it will be much easier. Okay, so these three, actually, uh, I will say most of my clients will choose option three. For those that are ERP, I mean, uh, some of my clients that I know, they use their ERP directly in the app streaming. So the end user don't have to like find oh how to why is this a small window they have to type PC no they just add click the app it's run already. Then the second thing that people mostly will use is option two, and for myself I use option one. That means based on role I'll give you a different imaging. So it really depends on how simple or how complex you want to handle the whole role processing. Okay. So the next thing is that of course I mean you can like what I mentioned. With the traditional deployment, you actually can do every VM, I install different image. But with AVD, with MSIX, I can say when you log in, I immediately, okay, all of them are same window 10, but the moment they log in, I will install the HRF for them immediately. I mean, it's not like install, it's already there for them. So it's like, hey, it's, it's ready. Oh, I got a HRF, I got a sales. Okay, then for sales, they got a sales. So the beauty of this is that whenever there's a window update, I just do Satu Kali. I update one package that everybody got it. Then of course with this it's actually more towards um, you just need to don't need to do repackaging. I mean some of them is already have MSIX. So you just need to get the MSIX. Then of course there's a link down there. We actually you can I mean if you are interested on in the POC let me know. We can try play around with this MSIX where you actually can on demand install the program for the end user. As about they did AutoCAD pop we install AutoCAD for them. They need Excel, we give them Excel. So it's on demand. Okay. So then this is the beauty. I mean, this is not me say, this is Microsoft say. So I believe there are a few uh, people who represent, I mean, people who can represent Microsoft to talk. So this is what Microsoft mentioned is that they compatible promise. They will promise you. If your program doesn't work, they'll make sure it works. In, so over here. So in so far in my life, there's only one program that doesn't work, which I will share later. But most of them, which is a normal application, it will work, even ERPs, all of them works, okay? So the reason why it doesn't work, I will talk about the uh, 
the fall off. And there's nothing that Microsoft can do. It's more towards the licensing issue. Okay, so then I'll move on. Okay, what if you want to DIY? I mean, these are some of the my own thoughts. Okay, I say, okay, why don't I set up my own RDS? Trust me, I did that before, and uh, I after I understand about AVD, then I say, okay, let's start to do this DIY. At the end, these are the all the all the colorful box represent one server. So imagine I need to set up one, two, three, four, four servers just to get it up. So assuming you might have these resources, assuming one resources you take around two hours to finish, it'll take you one day. And that doesn't say about your security. It might work, but it doesn't reflect on your security. Okay, that's something you need to take note. Huh? You can set it up. Everyone can set up. In Windows, it's very easy. Just click next. Close your eyes, just next. Then after that, uh, need license. Uh, okay, we say yes. Then after that, you get someone. Okay, that's a different story. But I will say it's quite easy to set up, but I will say it's not secure. So when you got problem again, you don't want, I mean, for IT providers, you don't want the end user to come to you to bombard you with problems because it's not worth it. And some of my customer term who end user, they like, they, they like to tell me, can it, I like an uneventful system. No downtime. Um, it's almost impossible, but I mean, unless you're willing to pay for it, yeah. But one thing good about this AVD, it's almost uneventful. I mean, basically it's that once it's up, it's running. The only thing that you will get uh, eventful is that you set the wrong setting on it. And that can be remedied in maybe like few sec few minutes. Again, few minutes rather than troubleshoot every single component. And of course, Microsoft support is always over there to support you, to make sure that it's all running. So that's kudos to the Microsoft team. Then of course I'm here. So you can just anytime bring me up then I will just have you over here. Okay. Let's talk about, I keep on talking about the benefit, the benefit, the benefit. So, but <clears throat> I need to make sure that you know some of the common problems that I face. And I want to make sure that you also know, okay? So one of the things that you might need to know is latency issue. Okay, latency means low. So some people say, hey, Kenny, my internet speed is, uh, I mean, there are some uh, bank that I work with. They say, Kenny, I have the, fastest internet why am i still slow and i think last few uh few weeks ago kuching also tell me the same thing hey all the while i connect to your server why is it today become slow i have 500 meg so after i check through is the latency so for those who have scanners you can scan this barcode then you will later you go to a website actually is your test your latency to the azure server you can have the highest speed but if your latency is bad the whole experience is bad okay so the best way is to get a latency like this. That's me around 30 ms. When you do the testing, make sure that it's around 30 ms. You get anything more than if you connect to US, you will get around like 300. And the speed of 300 ms will be like doing a Facebook Live. You share now after four seconds, then the thing show. So that is how slow it can be. Okay, with 20 uh, around 30 ms, so it's almost like you're using uh, next to your, I mean, yeah, like you're using um, maybe maybe almost instance, almost near instance. Okay, so I will say I can watch movie with 30 ms, but uh, later I'll put that's one of the common problems. You can watch movie, you can play sound, I stream it, well, so far it's pretty good. Okay, so some of you will hit some issue is the licensing issue. It's not that the program doesn't work. It's just a program that you buy doesn't support that. Example, like you go and use old Microsoft Office. I know some of you still have application that demand you to use old Microsoft Office. And you'll get this something like this. This copy of Microsoft Excel cannot use on terminal service. Okay, so all you need to do is just upgrade the license or let me know. There's another way. Actually, we can configure it to be. That's why you need to choose the one with personal. So when you choose personal, then um, it works because it's no longer limited to the terminal service. So this is a small issue. This is a matter of how you configure the AVD on it. Okay. Remember I mentioned there is a problem that you cannot solve. No matter, you ask Microsoft, Microsoft also cannot solve. I still surprised there are applications that still use Tonga. Okay, I'm talk okay, I will say, I cannot say the program name, but I will say in general, it's like accounting system. 
Okay, so they use dongle. If you need dongle, I'm sorry, you're out of luck, you can't work. Okay, but the good thing is uh, most of the application that have dongle, they come with the option to uh, run without the dongle. But the problem will be the price. Okay, so that one you have to check with your vendor and then if you can pay for the price, then yep, this problem will be solved. Uh, <clears throat> like just now I mentioned, I do watch movie in uh, my, I mean, in my virtual desktop. It works perfectly, but sometimes it will just hang for a while. I mean, everything is working, just that the movie not moving. It's maybe moving too fast. So sometimes it gets a little bit light, a little bit, then it continues. So the problem about you watching YouTube and watching movie over a remote desktop, I mean, rarely people do that, but I have my reason to do that. Okay, so... People who do that like me, I mean, I will get hanged. But if you're talking about like Autodesk, yeah, everything should, it's everything okay. But watching movie is like YouTube, if it's a uh, slow connection, so it's just hang, then you buffer it, then continue. But because over on AVD, the internet speed is around, I mean, okay, don't quote me. Huh? The minimum you can get is around 100 meg. But the highest I get is around 2,900 2, Mbps. 2,900. That is super, super fast. So when I use it to download some software or maybe I try to like maybe watch some YouTube, yeah, it's super fast. It's just poop, all finished. But the problem is your internet connection could be the bottleneck. So sometimes when internet latency got issue, pop, it will just hang for a while, then resume back. So you miss some parts. But other than that, yeah, it's, it's pretty okay. Okay, then of course, online meeting. AVD come with some solution to push the help because if you're using Microsoft Teams, okay, you will realize that your battery use a lot and you can see your processor actually uh, use quite a lot. Especially if you're not using i5, you use i3, you can see who oh, it's actually quite laggy. But if you use AVD, it can push all the work to the AVD. It means that the AVD will process and you get a smooth live streaming. It's really, really good. Uh, we try it out. But the problem is that it's only support Microsoft team. If you're using Zoom like right now, or you're using uh, Google Meet or other providers, uh, basically there's nothing, there's no much uh, improvement over there. The only improvement is on Microsoft team. So that's why these are some of the common problem. You can say, wow, it's so good in uh, Microsoft team. It might work for all. No, nope. Microsoft team, yes. And if you are doing a software development, if you use a share mode, you'll get port conflict. So as I, I want to use port 80, another person want to use port 80, you'll get conflict and it doesn't work. Okay. So I think I almost finished and almost going to go to the Q&A. So I got two more slides. <clears throat> so let me just uh, continue. Just hold on your questions. I will answer them. How much does it cost? Okay. So this one is based on my experience and based on my own testing. So example, if you, I'm not talking about using a super video card, okay? Those super video card, it will cost you a lot, but cheaper than you're buying a new video card. But how much is it? It really depends on your configuration. So we can go uh, into one-on-one -on -one to talk more about that because as I said, we don't want to uh, jump out every time. But let's talk about if I do Photoshop. Okay, I do photo Photoshop. Don't need a dedicated video card. It works just with the cheapest, uh, cheapest VM. It works. Okay. So it will cost you, for example, maybe you need to put a budget around 400 to 800. So that's inclusive of the licensing, including the bandwidth that you use. Oh, it's, I mean, it's really, really uh, less. Unless you transfer the file out. I mean, as long as you work everything in the VM, in, I mean, every transfer in is free. Transfer out is, is you need to pay. So you need to put a budget around 400 to 800 VM per dedicated clients for one person. But if you want to like me, you want to share, you know, I can see, uh, share the pool. So the cost could be as cheap as 150 or 300. I mean, I need to be realistic. It's 150 to 300. But of course, if you believe Microsoft like earlier, uh, around seven US dollars, yeah, maybe you can hit that with reasonable performance. But that doesn't inclusive of the license or the bandwidth. So I would just say 150 or 300. So sometimes I can hit my bandwidth usage around like 50 ringgit, 30 ringgit. But sometimes I can hit to 300 ringgit. So when we do budget, I cannot tell you, hey, let's do a budget of 50 ringgit. <laughs> you will, I think it's unrealistic. So let's keep it around 150 to 300 for one client. So if you use less, or maybe it's holiday, so nobody use, yeah, then the price might go down. But again, this depends on how we configure it. 
Okay, so now we'll come to my final slide. So I will just recap on the benefit that I've shared today. Okay, we're using AVD. So there are three things that I want to emphasize why we use AVD. Okay, number one will be the portability because we want to make it simple. We want to make everything can just any, anyone going to use handphone to work. You can trust me. I mean, whenever I work in the hospital, I mean, when I go to clinics, I still need to work. I use remote desktop to work because sometimes it will be much easier. And I cannot have all the apps installed into my phone because some function is not there. Example like Notepad, okay? And on demand. So some, I mean, as I say, you can make it auto scale or uh, manual scale, but as I said, when you need it, you just run it in minutes. So example, like right now, you say, Kenny, yep, I want to go uh, ahead and start it round in my Azure. Yeah, you can just go ahead and start, okay? So the most, the most important thing is just to, you need to know how to configure. Once you know how to configure, then basically it's just a matter of just activate and deactivate it. Okay, so that's on demand. And as I said, even though you use on your on-premises, it will be worse than you put on the cloud. On the cloud, the, the, the thing that made people spook will be the reporting. But trust me, the reporting is the one who save you. They're telling, hey, there are people that are attacking you right now. On your on-premises, people attack you, you don't know because nothing happened. But when things happen, the, the, the reason that you know it happened is because a user complained to you. And we want to prevent that. It's better to be proactive than reactive. So I think um, that's it for my presentation for today. So I was hope that this will help you guys in uh, making decision on the AVD. Then I uh, will pass back to uh, Amrita to all the question and answers. Sure. Thank you, Kenny, for the session today. I think I really hope that this has benefited the audience. So before moving to the Q&A session, uh, we would just like to do a quick polling. Um, this is the last poll for the session today. And I request each one of you to kindly pour, you know, cast your vote. So we just wanted to, uh, you know, like to know if you want us to work with you on POC or on, R on RDP. Okay, I see people voting. I'll keep the vote. I'll keep the you know this particular polling open for another thirty to forty seconds. So I request each one of you to kindly vote and let us know if you want us to work with you on POC on RDP. Half of the people have already voted. I request the uh, the people, the other people who have not yet voted to kindly cast your vote as well. And let us know your viewpoint. We'll keep it for another 10 seconds. Okay, I'm ending the polling for now. I think, Kenny, we have our results. Yes, that's a very good result. So, um, okay, for those who press yes, I mean, there's uh, quite a number of you guys. We will contact you uh, separately later. So I think maybe uh, we can go ahead with the... Wow, some of the questions are pretty funny. Okay, so maybe uh, Amrita, you can continue yeah. with the question. So before, uh, yeah, before moving to the Q&A sections, we also have a few questions, um, uh, you know, in the chat section. So I would like to read it out to you beforehand. Ah, so sure. one of our attendees have, uh, you know, have showcased interest in terms of how we can control sensitive info when implement BYOD. This is from Muhammad Hanafia. Mm, okay. So like I say, I mean, all the data... The sensitive information, it need to depends on where is the sensitive information is located. I mean, is it in your server or is on the client AVD? So example, like some of my clients that um, they are doing R&D. So what they do is that they prevent the files to be copied out from the AVD. So everything that they work, they will have to work in the AVD and they block certain... Um, certain website that don't allow them to share out the files. Then example, like if you're using like Microsoft 365, 
uh, whenever there's email, I mean, as about in Microsoft 365, I mean, it's a bit out of topic, but in Microsoft 365, of course, you can actually configure, nothing can be sent outside the domain. So okay, I so hope, he, yeah. Okay, so um, Kenny, he has actually another question. Okay. Uh, he's asking, how is Azure protection again ransomware? Yeah, so like I just mentioned, by default, antivirus and um, it's already there. Okay, and we already have a Microsoft, I mean, in Azure, we have something called the security center, which actually actively detecting this or the one sentinel. I mean, basically it's like, we want to activate more powerful, you can use the one sentinel. So there are a lot of uh, protection tools that you can actually put in, to the, in place. But by default, the security center already detect all those. Then let's assume that all fail. I mean, I want to use the worst case scenario, like just now I share in my slides. Um, well, if anything happened to one of the client, it's only that client. It's not going to impact on other client, even though they are sharing the same virtual machine. Okay, uh, so, uh, you know, I hope this has answered the question. So there's another one which says, how do you auto scale up by creating new VM when load increase and auto scale down when load decrease by shutting down and deleting the VM? Uh, I think that is the answer actually. Yeah, it just, it will depend on the volume. So we actually can set that, uh, I mean, that first, I mean, you can configure based on that first design where example like, First, we'll maximize the number of server. I mean, inside one PC, we can limit to 10 people. If when there's more than 10 people, we'll spin up another server. So by end of the day, so maybe at 5.30, so we say, okay, after 5.30, we'll assume that we'll send a message alert to all the end users. Okay, now, uh, Abba Adi, it's time to go. If you still need to uh, join in, please log in again. So we will end the session and shut down the server and move the session back to the primary servers, which we allocated, the original committed. So okay. we have all the script for that, sorry. Okay, okay. Um, so there's another one which says multi-session is two-person RDP. I believe no. they wanted to. Okay. It can be more than, uh, it's unlimited. Okay. So there's another one which says MS365 Business Basic can use? You can use, but you still have to pay additional license. Okay. There's so it, it will more, be yeah. safe. I mean, I will say you need to make the, I mean, when we do the POC, I mean, if you are one of them, so I will say we can judge whether your costing, is it variable to add additional 10 or 20 ringgit for those selected people who need to use or just upgrade the whole Office 365 license. So it really depends on how many people want to use the AVD. Okay, so here's another one printing out. Actually, we have a couple of them. Uh, printing out document will have charges. Nope. One of them is asking. And then can this AVD use in multiple Linux interface? Multiple Linux. I mean, you, I need a little bit more clarification. If you are talking about, okay, I'm using a Ubuntu client. Then I want to connect to RDB. Yeah, of course you can. Okay. So there's another one who says, uh, how about designing software licenses are belong to us or it's bundled together? I need a little bit more clarification on that one. Okay, I mean, Bharat, we, yes. Um, yeah. So Bharat Muthu, we request if you can elaborate your question further. Uh, so one of them is just asking whether remote desktop is, is AVD, right? It's, it's the yeah. same thing. Uh, it's the same technology, but it's a different thing. Okay, so we'll move on to the Q&A, uh, you know, section now, wherein we have multiple questions there. So one of the person has asked, um, can multiple users log in at the same time? Yes, you can. Okay, and in RDP also multiple user can log in with different user credential, is it, isn't it? Yeah, so it's the same thing. Okay, then we have goes, can user f can you can use for user to print and scan at user place? Mm, I don't understand about scan, but you say print, yes. But if you think about barcode scanner, yeah, of course you can. Okay. And we have we've seen a couple of more. What is the internet bandwidth required for 500 users concurrent? Pool multi-share can be used concurrent. Mm, I will say. I mean, you are talking about 
okay, the server speed is around one server, one VM speed is around three thousand. I oh, sorry, two thousand. I oh, sorry, that I mentioned two, the maximum that I tested is two thousand nine hundred Mbps. So when we have five hundred users, so assuming that depends on how we configure it, if we share to around ten servers, so basically there are there will be no lagging in the server side. But if you're talking about the end user from their desktop, every user will use around like maybe two to five meg. So roughly, I will say around maybe you need around 800 megabytes if you want to concurrently everyone use at the same time. But I will say uh, really steady 500 meg. I mean, I haven't really tried with 500 concurrent. I tried with 100. We tested with 100 meg. It works perfectly fine. Okay, uh, so I'll take up the next one, which says, um, how about choosing office printers to print document in AVD? Just like a normal printer in your no local desktop, because it will be able to detect your printers in your, I mean, when you run the remote desktop, it will detect your local printer in your desktop. Okay, can it work on old laptop? Yes. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, how old is the laptop? I mean, if you're talking about like window, seven and a win as long as window i can't remember but i think let's logically if it's using window xp and above yes you can okay so we have another one what about the licensing on the cal license do you need uh, do need to purchase cal license for it no you don't i mean uh, there's a separate license it's called the business license uh which is much cheaper i mean after we compare all the available i mean basically there's a if you are not using office 365 you can pay for, uh, there's a certain license called, I can't remember what is it. Um, if I'm, I mean, don't quote me, but I remember it's called the uh, window. Um, okay, I will get back on this one. That's a, I mean, basically you need to buy a license, but not a car license. So it's like on per user. Okay. Um, so Tanvi, we will get back to you on this. So we have another question. If we do our work in AVD, what client should be the best to be used? Uh, personally, I love a uh, remote desktop client, the one that comes with all windows. So that's the best. But uh, if there is the, uh, if you don't have that option, HTML5 will be the second best. Okay. So before I need to develop the AVD, uh, I need to create an AAD first? Yes, you need an AAD first. Okay, then we have another one, standard license, I think. M365 standard license can use? Uh, It's not applicable because like just now I mentioned in my slides, I mean, there are certain license, uh, I mean, you can use the Office 365 inside there, but then you in order to, I mean, legally use this AVD, you need to buy another license because Office, they need Microsoft 365, a certain category. Let me see if I have the slides. Give me a second, huh? Is my screen still sharing, right? Yes, yes, get Okay, let me just go back to my slide again. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, so with this, I okay, so over here, just now I say the cheapest license actually is called the Window 10 v, uh, VDA. I think it costs around like, I can't remember the exact amount, but I think it's less than 30 ringgit, might be lower. I put 30 ringgit, it's quite high. Right? I think it's less than 30 ringgit. But don't quote me because I don't have the price list with me right now. But let's assume you are using Microsoft 365 A1, okay? So you might need to upgrade to E3 if you plan to let all your whole company to use uh, this AVD. But if you selectively want to let certain user to use the, uh, sorry, uh, this, uh, what do you call it? Azure Virtual Desktop AVD then you can just buy this window 10 VDA license. Okay, so there's another question which says, uh, can this AVD use in multiple Linux interface? Uh, what? Okay, AVD by default, most people who use AVD is because of Windows. If you are using Linux, usually we we'll use what they call the SSH only. So you don't need AVD if you are using Linux. And does AVD has Android version? version? Yes, it's called a remote desktop. Okay, and uh, what is the additional license needed for M365 Basic? I will say if you want uh, additional license that you want to buy, it's just the Windows 10 VDA only. 
and can it be used to scan document from the scanner located in our office that is a good question i never try personally because i can't find any scanner i mean the closest thing we have is uh we have a program that actually take photo and send to the avd then i assume that the scanner work the same but i think if you using a poc we can actually explore it together okay uh, there's another one goes upgrading vga resources uh, will have charges what's the maximum size well the vga actually there's a uh, depend on the there are no i think the biggest is i think the processor is the same just the number of memory for the video card so basically uh for for the person who asked this question maybe if you are in, i mean basically the charges will be around it's quite uh quite hard for me to tell right now but if i'm mistaken around few thousand ringgit i mean for one instance which you can share by 10 or 20 people it's up to i mean depends on how you want to do it so i will say maybe if you are going for a poc we actually can explore this much further on this vga resources okay uh there's another one can we set individual resource cpu and memory for each session okay the answer is yes and no okay it doesn't work like i can set this person only can use two git ram it doesn't work that way but actually i can cluster all the user into a same class means that everyone who are belong to this class i mean example who belong to hr they only can use this application with two git but you but they need to be separate vms they cannot be like same vm okay so is there a limit on how many users uh, can use or and can we use windows 7 or windows xp remote desktop to connect to avd there are no limits um the only limit is the hardware that i mean example if you choose to to cram all the user into the server it depends on how much the server can handle okay for every session that join into this session let's assume no application open it only takes around 200 mb compared to you do your own virtual desktop that will takes around 4 gigabytes so actually it can put a lot by example once you open excel everybody open a big excel then you will get bloated very fast and can we use windows 7 actually definitely yes okay so what is the difference between citrix and avd well citrix is citrix is also like a remote desktop that avd is the remote desktop it works and feel exactly like remote desktop but citrix is the technology that they actually uh, they do by themselves and in microsoft azure also have citrix okay so will it be slow for multi person use okay we have i mean when we do the proof of concept for our own team so we have around like 10 developers concurrently using uh how many 32 git ram and it cost so imagine 10 people and all of them are doing high intensity programming especially we are doing android application doing ios application well i mean the user i mean my developer are very very happy they are i mean they feel that it's very fast but of course if you say uh, the problem that they face is not about fast or slow it's actually about when the internet goes down then hey, suddenly they they cannot connect then after the internet resume then they resume back that's the only hiccup they face so far okay okay kenny so there's another one if we have a pc with windows in office for us to work what is the point to use avd to do the same thing this is to justify to the management okay he has a question okay. on the uses of the avd okay yeah that's a very good question so example i already have a window let's assume you have a window running on your laptop which is using window 10 and suddenly in the okay there are two scenarios that uh, we do this is the pc refresh so number one there are window 12 coming up but your application want to use uh window 10 so you still can use your application in window 10 and the newer application in the avd so that is one of the scenario the second scenario is that multitask there are certain task example like power user in excel sometimes you want to do a calculation it takes a rough few hours trust me i mean imagine how many formula are there so what they do is that rather than close that every time they have to rebuild the whole thing so they put into a avd so every time they open two screens one is for the avd one is for my current work so or example like autocad they will put their work into the avd 
to do the rendering or do the compilation or 3 Studio Max to do the rendering. Then while here, I do my other works. So the only justification you can use AVD is for doing multitask. For if you already have Windows on your laptop, you want to do multitask or you want to experiment with something else, which especially those applications that require high speed internet. Okay. okay, so there's another one. Can we transfer all documents saved in AVD to another AVD? Uh, huh, that's a very good question. Um, you cannot just copy from, I mean, if you are admin, you can, but you need to go through a lot of uh, layers. You need to go through a lot of security layers. So to answer this, the, uh, the easiest way is, like as about your op from the remote desktop, the other remote desktop, just share, the, I mean, like share a folder, you just copy into that. That will be the easiest, like a normal copy for files. Because okay. if you want to go through uh, like back end, oh, it's, the, it's a lot of security you have to go through. It's very hard. Okay, so there's uh, one more, you know, question which says, can you guys do POC and ROI as a part of proposal? Mm, yeah, usually when we do the POC, you will see the ROI already. And what is the difference in POC and RDP? Sorry? Uh, so Hana is asking, what difference POC and RDP? So okay. Would you like to explain it a <laughs> bit more? Yeah. Okay, Hannah. so what, what does it mean by POC? So POC is called proof of concept. So I mean, the thing that uh, for us, we enjoy is that we want to prove to you that it works. We want you to feel it and we want you to try it in your real environment. It doesn't make sense that I keep on telling you, oh, it's good, it's good, but at the end, double jalan. So this POC means that we want to, I mean, uh, we have a one-on-one -on -one session with you. Uh, one thing about Microsoft uh, help is that they actually give you free credits to try out. So you don't have to pay anything. So you just have to say, yes, you want it. Then we will come to you, arrange a session. Then we can do uh, some testing, some uh, we listen to you and what are the things that you want to test out. Then if it works, you can choose to continue to use it or you can just choose, yeah, I just don't want to use it anymore or maybe for future reference. Okay. So I think uh, Kenny, we have almost covered the questions. Uh, in case I request the attendees, in case you have any more questions, I request you to please put in on the Q&A section. Okay, this I'll just check. Yeah, there's another one, uh, just come up. We have a lot of macro programming on the Excel. Will it be affected when we move to AVD? The answer is simple, Tada. it's perfect. It will be like running on your computer. So I believe uh, you will be one of those super users who put a lot of macro. Yeah, so this will be work great for you. Just put over there and just run. Nothing happened. It will work exactly like a local laptop without jamming up your laptops. And you can just shut down your computer, go back home, open up your computer. The thing, it will still run. How to use an AVD from iOS phone? Uh, basically, especially? in iOS, uh, you can actually install something called a remote desktop. So once you have the remote desktop, you will give you a server name. You just enter the server name, then they'll check your credential, then pop you're in. Okay. So there's a last question that we have. Uh, should I increase the PC specification if want to use AVD? Mm, which PC specification are you referring here? I mean, your own PC or the AVD specs? So if you are talking about your own PC, basically uh, I use Celeron to run this remote desktop and it works flawlessly. Okay, so in other words, that you don't need a supercomputer to run this remote desktop. It works in, in the lowest spec that you can find. Okay, so, but in the AVD side, uh, if you're talking about, okay, right now my AVD, I only allocated maybe eight core with 32 gig RAM. So I can just increase it to the next level, maybe to, um, to 24 core. Then after I use for one hour, I can reduce it to eight core. So it's up to you when you want to up and down. Okay, so uh, this last question, actually, we, we, we got another one just now. Uh, we have local license distribution server. Is this can be used still or linked to RDP? Mm, I need to know more about that license. What license is that? I mean, because over here, uh, if you are talking about like LDS car license, uh, then yeah, but are you talking about your license for your custom software? Do you mind to give a sample example or? 
Yeah, so Bharat, would you like to explain it further? In terms of you're saying, so he's saying designing software license. Oh, that's no problem. So basically, those license because your AVD will works like a uh, local. I mean, basically, it's like the PC is on your local premises, on premises. Okay, but the only thing is that it depends on the software. I mean, it depends on case by case. So, example, your software example like ESAP. Okay, it's antivirus. You need a server to run in order to use the license. So once this AVD join to your uh, on-premise VPN, that will work as per normal. Okay. So I think we have covered all the questions for today. Um, you know, I request participants if they have any more questions to put in the Q&A section. We'll wait for another one minute or so. Dear participants, let us know in case you have any more questions. Kenny, I think we're good and we've covered, uh, uh, you know, all the queries here. Yeah, I mean, uh, I appreciate that everyone uh, who attended today. I hope that uh, the session is beneficial to at least let you know some of the things you can do and you need to watch out. So for those who actually uh, click yes or the POC, uh, we will actually contact you uh, maybe within uh, this week or next week. Then for those who maybe accidentally press no, um, I mean, I'm not sure how how should we do. I mean, if you need anything, maybe we can just email me. I mean, will that works? I mean, I'm Rita. I mean, will that works? I mean, if they yes, email me. Yes, yes, or... I'll, I'll share the email with the participants right away. Mm. Okay. Give me a moment. So, so uh, I mean, to be frank, I mean, uh, thank you everyone for attended. And if there's any thing that uh, I miss up or any question that you have, any burning question that you have, feel free to message me or maybe email me. Yes. Okay. So with that, so, I think thank you. I pass yes. back to you. Yeah, yeah, Kenny. So I would like also to thank, uh, you know, all the participants for joining us today. We also urge you to kindly submit your feedback post the session. So the link to the feedback, uh, you know, form will be reflected on your screen now. This has been also shared on the chat section. So we request you to kindly share your feedback and let us know so that we can curate the session better. And based on your needs, and customize it accordingly if required. So those of you whose questions, you know, we were not able to take um, or in case you are not able to, uh, you know, put it through due to the paucity of time, you can please ask your query in this particular email ID. We are all yours on this ID and we'll look forward for your feedback and suggestions. You can connect with Kenny on this particular email ID. Okay. So with this, we would like to end our session for today. We thank you each one of you for, power, for participation and for joining us today. And we would like to thank Kenny as well for giving us such an informative session. Thank you, Kenny, and have a great day, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much.